Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Was Terribly Betrayed and Kills Everyone One by One Part 3. Before we start please go support Zack Oblivion for writing that awesome fanfic. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay is a male in this story. Chapter 15. The Arrival of Ragnarok. We can see what appears to be a kind of island floating in the black and dark void of space, along the edges of this island large amounts of water fell, similar to waterfalls, on that island hundreds of buildings could be seen, all with a unique and beautiful design, it was a place that shone in that dark void. This place was the home of the Nordic faction Asgard. Hwa. A soldier who was guarding the outskirts of the city, along with other guards, had yawned out of boredom, drawing the attention of his captain. Damn, this is boring. The soldier said with a bored expression and tone. Hey what do you mean by that? The man who seemed to be the captain of the group asked with a frown. At this the soldier turned to look at his leader and spoke in a carefree and bored tone. Captain, I became an Asgardian soldier to fight against enemies in times of battle, not to wander around the city all day, don't you think it's a little too quiet here? The guard said as he looked at his leader. Idiot that peace is only because we're here defending the city every day. Don't be such an idiot when you haven't even been in a real fight. Not to mention that we're in the middle of a war against the monster that the Sekiruite became. It's in these times that Asgard needs all the soldiers it can get. The squad leader rebuked the impertinent soldier. But that's fair, then I'd be able to do my job if there was any real combat. The soldier replied, returning to patrol the outskirts of Asgard. However, the guard noticed something strange. Hey, what's that? He said, sharpening his gaze. The soldier's behavior caught the attention of his leader, who looked at him with curiosity. Something wrong? There's something there, but I can't figure out what it is, the soldier replied to his leader, pointing towards the horizon. The leader looked carefully at the place where the soldier was pointing, the only thing he could see was a very small black spot, which seemed to be moving. What demons? The leader's eyes widened in shock as he watched a red light appear replacing the black one, said light moving at great speed in a certain direction. He was taking his stand. Look out he shouted, alerting his entire squad. The soldiers looked confused at what their general had said. However, that confusion turned to surprise when they noticed how a huge beam of red energy passed extremely close to them and then crashed head-on into a building in the city. The moment of impact, the object generated a huge explosion, which destroyed many more buildings around it, taking the lives of many Asgardian civilians. When the guards got up they watched this action with horror. What the hell is going on? One of the guards shouted. It's here the leader said as he felt the ground beneath him begin to shake slightly. The other soldiers looked in shock and horror at what was in front of them. Hi do Issei's army. The soldiers watched in amazement as hundreds, if not hundreds, of large creatures appeared. Their skin was completely black, and their most striking feature was a kind of white mask, which had a pointed nose and revealed their teeth. They had a kind of spike around what was supposed to be their neck. Another important detail about their appearance was that they all had a large hole in the middle of their chest. And leading this army of beasts was a beautiful woman with long dark purple hair, snow pale skin, and eyes of an intense bright red color, like a beautiful pair of rubies, it was the beast of the apocalypse Trahixa. The purple haired girl looks at the city of Asgard with a grim smile. To be honest, I never imagined myself commanding an army it feels good. She exclaimed as her eyes shone with evil and bloodlust. Attack. With a slight whisper, the hundreds of beasts charged towards the city, beginning to destroy everything in their path. Are you waiting for a kiss on the cheek? We have to defend the city no matter what the threat is, fight, give your lives for Asgard. The general of the Asgardian army shouted. A large number of soldiers and Valkyries appeared and began to fight against the Minos Grants. Although these were not very fast due to their large size, they made up for this with their great resistance and enormous destructive power. The great and destructive battle broke out between the Asgardian army and the Minos Grants. The Hollows attacked everything that moved by launching powerful Ceros, these attacks had such power that they not only managed to kill dozens of soldiers and Valkyries with a single shot, but they also caused great destruction in their wake, managing to kill two Paramos with one shot. While the soldiers were fighting, some of these same soldiers were helping to evacuate civilians. However, not everyone was so lucky, hundreds of civilians died every second due to the destruction caused by the Hollows. These beasts generated a small tremor in the place just by walking, which made it more difficult for civilians to simply flee for their lives. The group of soldiers were facing Aminos, however their attacks barely phased the enormous beast. This being began to charge a Ciro ready to eliminate the soldiers, because they were too close they knew they could not dodge the attack, so they closed their eyes resigned to dying. But just when the Minos Grand is about to fire its attack, a huge lightning impact cuts its body and ends up splitting it in half and obviously ending its life. 
Hope lit up like a great bonfire when they saw the person responsible for the attack. Or the god of thunder had arrived on the battlefield. The god began to spin his hammer, generating a huge electrical storm above him. In less than a second a large amount of lightning bolts came from the sky hitting the Minos grants, reducing them to ashes. Don't be intimidated by these beasts, if fear consumes you, you do not have the right to call yourselves the defenders of Asgard he shouted, launching himself to attack the other hollows. The words full of bravery and confidence of the god of lightning, managed to reach the hearts of each guard and Valkyrie, who began to attack the enemies with all their might, managing, even if only a little, to match the summons. Both Thor and the Asgardian army faced the Minos Grands, outside the city Trahixa was floating in the air watching the whole fight with a slight mocking smile. You could see in his eyes how he was delighting in that battle, he watched with amusement as if it were a funny movie. Well, I guess it's my turn. The purple-haired girl said as she watched Thor finish off a couple of Minos Grands. Trahixa disappeared in a burst of speed, reappearing behind the Norse god, who instantly turned around as he felt an incredibly powerful presence behind him. The god's eyes fell on the woman in front of him, just by looking at her he could feel an overwhelming power emanating from her, his instinct screamed at him not to confront her, that he would be no match, however he was not willing to back down and let Asgard fall. Thor's thoughts were interrupted when Trahixa's voice reached his ears. Well, god's little excuse, let's get this over with quickly, it was a boring day, and I'd rather finish this faction as soon as possible, so I can go to sleep. The beast of the apocalypse exclaimed somewhat lazily. The Norse god felt offended when he saw that the purple-haired girl didn't take him seriously. I must assume that you are responsible for this attack, Thor said seriously. Well, what are you eating that you're guessing? I asked mockingly, looking at the guy with the hammer. The Norse god, already fed up with hearing her, began to charge a large amount of lightning in his hammer. Due to the power he was generating, a blue flash with some lightning could be seen throughout Asgard. With all his might the god threw his hammer at Trahixa, hoping to end the fight quickly. The woman stood in her place patiently waiting for the hammer. Just when the weapon was about to hit its target, it was stopped without difficulty by a single hand of the purple-haired girl. The god's eyes opened wide, he had concentrated all his strength and power on that attack, and that woman had stopped it without any problem, it was simply impossible. It's not possible was all Thor could say in his state of shock. Oh dear, you have no idea what's possible. Trahixa said with a mocking smile watching the Norse god's reaction. The purple-haired girl began to exert pressure on the hammer, Thor opened his eyes in horror as he saw how his hammer began to fracture little by little, until finally it was destroyed, exploding into a thousand pieces, generating a slight shock wave that was felt throughout Asgard. The few soldiers and Valkyries who were near the place were pushed by the shock wave, which in turn raised a light curtain of smoke when it disappeared. The hope in the soldiers was extinguished. As Trahixa stood in front of him, piercing Thor's chest with her bare hand, she had even taken out his heart. As a little blood came out of his mouth, the last thing the god of thunder could see before dying was that woman smiling at him with mockery and evil, while behind her could be seen the silhouette of an enormous and terrifying beast. And in this way Thor, the god of thunder, closed his eyes forever. Odin, the strongest god of the Nordic faction and leader of the same, was sitting on his throne waiting for his son Thor to return, he had been told that Asgard was being attacked by an unknown enemy, and that was why the god of thunder went out to support the troops, and since then he had not returned. Odin's face reflected pure seriousness, something rare for him. The old god prayed that the person responsible for the attack was not the former pillar of the factions, although deep down he knew it was inevitable, the end had come to Asgard. Suddenly a gigantic pressure was present throughout the place, the old man looked up observing how a woman with purple hair and red eyes walked slowly and elegantly towards him. But something horrified him, and that something was the fact that the woman was holding the head of his son Thor in her left hand. Hey there, old fart. I hope you don't mind that I had to kill your annoying son. Apparently Asgardians have no manners. Trahixa said with a mocking smile. The woman dropped the thunder god's head, which fell to the ground with a thud, staining it with his blood. Without a shred of hesitation, she crushed the head with her foot, causing the deceased god's blood and brains to stain the floor even more. Odin's furious gaze fell on the woman, who looked at him with mockery and evil. I don't care who you are, you dared to attack Asgard and kill me and my son, and that is something I will never forgive you for he exclaimed, looking at the purple-haired girl with hatred. Odin rose from his throne and summoned his spear gunner and launched himself at the purple-haired girl with a deadly stab. However, to the god's surprise, the woman stopped the tip of the spear with just one finger and had a bored expression on her beautiful face. Odin didn't stop there and began to launch many more attacks and stabs trying in every possible way to give even a measly scratch to his enemy, who continued to block all the attacks with the same bored expression. 
this is disappointing Trahixa said to stop the tip of the spear with two fingers, Aden tried to move his weapon, but no matter how much force he used he simply couldn't, I honestly expected you to be a challenge, that you would manage to give me some fight or something, but unfortunately it wasn't like that, you are too weak, you and your pathetic faction, I'm already bored of it. I don't intend to prolong this stupid battle any longer. In less than a second the woman had snatched the spear from Aden and used it to pierce his heart from side to side, even leaving the old man nailed to his throne. In his last seconds of life, the Norse god saw a fear sent terrifying silhouette that he knew perfectly appear behind the woman. The Trahixa were the old god's last words. At that moment, Aden, father of all, king of Asgard died, and that same day, his faction died with him. Chapter 16. Olympus. Our chestnut protagonist was standing in front of his next target to eliminate. The home of the gods and the Norse faction, Olympus. Oh I'll be able to play a lot with the Greek gods, it'll be so much fun haha. Ha. Issei said while smiling as if he were a little child. Okay, calm down Issei, first you have to get his attention, but how will I do it? The brown-haired boy placed his index finger on his chin and thought, when a very funny idea came to his mind, causing a big smile to appear on his face, let the game begin he. The boy's face reflected excitement and enthusiasm, as if he were a five-year-old child, however his eyes conveyed enormous madness and bloodlust. Issei slowly brought his hand closer to his mouth and bit one of his fingers, causing a tiny wound and a small drop of blood. In Olympus. In the main hall of Mount Olympus, all the Greek gods were gathered together discussing the current event, which was catastrophic. I still find it hard to believe that the ancient Sekiruite is causing all these genocides. The goddess of wisdom Athena said. Well, you'll have to believe it. That brat not only exposed the supernatural to the world, breaking the balance into pieces, but he and his troops have eliminated the Hindu faction and killed the Mao. Exclaimed the hero of Olympus, Hercules, with extreme seriousness. The situation is not only affecting this world, the underworld is becoming overpopulated with souls from all the factions that that child is killing, and that has never happened before Hades had spoken with a tone of voice between indignant and annoyed, due to the situation in his kingdom. I agree with Hades, this war that the Sekuyute Haidu Issei started is beginning to affect even other realms. Tanato said supporting the god of the underworld. We must do something, it doesn't take a genius to know that he and his troops could come for us at any moment, said the messenger god Hermes. I agree with Hermes, if we let our guard down it could be the end for us, we need to be ready for when Haidu Issei decides to come for us. Apollo, the god of the sun, supported the messenger of the gods. Ah, that brat was just lucky, it's not that big of a deal. So what if he defeated those weaklings of the Mao and Shiba? We are the most powerful of all the factions. Exclaimed the god of war Ares with confidence and superiority. The god of war's words drew disapproving glances from the other gods of Olympus. You shouldn't underestimate your opponent Ares like that, in a battle it could cost you your life. Poseidon said, looking at the god of war with annoyance. Ares growled as he looked at the ocean god. I don't need battle advice from you, you piece of cheap sushi. The flame-haired man growled as he looked at his uncle. The god of the seas was about to respond when he was suddenly interrupted by a female voice. Don't even bother answering him, Poseidon, you know how Ares is. Said the queen of Olympus, the goddess Hera. We are getting off topic, the point of this meeting is that if Haidu Issei decides to attack Olympus, we must be prepared. He said with a strong and imposing voice none other than the king of Olympus and leader of said faction, Zeus. Poseidon was about to speak, however something happened that caught the attention of all the gods present. A gigantic golden lightning bolt struck outside Olympus, causing a small tremor. Because of this the room fell silent for a few seconds, before the accusing gazes of everyone present were fixed on Zeus. Alright, now you've become a fifth-rate electrician, Hades growled as he rubbed the bridge of his nose in frustration and tiredness. I swear this time it's not my fault, Zeus exclaimed, raising his hands in defense. It's always your fault all the gods of Olympus exclaimed loudly, looking at their leader. Before the god of Olympus could say anything, he and the rest of the gods had to hold on to something to keep from falling. Olympus was hit by a strong earthquake, the whole place trembled with great force, even some pillars fell, breaking into pieces due to the impact. What the hell is going on? Ares exclaimed as he barely stood. Uh, I think you should see this. Athena said in a voice that reflected fear and nervousness. The tone of voice of the goddess of wisdom caught the attention of her fellow gods, who turned to look in the direction where the goddess was pointing only to open my eyes in shock. D this can't be Tanado said in shock. W what is that thing Apollo asked while breaking out in a cold sweat. In the place where the golden lightning had fallen, a kind of creature was beginning to form. First a kind of metallic exoskeleton appeared, then a large amount of muscle fibers surrounded it at enormous speed, and finally the skin covered the entire structure revealing the titanic beast, which stood imposingly in front of Mount Olympus. 
The beast was over 300 meters tall, still small compared to Mount Olympus, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it was still huge, it looked like some kind of dinosaur, it had two muscular legs, a long tail, short but muscular arms, dorsal plates on its back, whose appearance resembled tree leaves, and finally its head, which looked like that of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Its eyes were tiny and blue, and it seemed to have a permanent smile on its face. The incredulous and nervous gazes of the Olympian gods were fixed on the enormous and imposing creature. Inside the nape of the beast you could see our beloved protagonist, in the body of the hick, were connected several nerves, which apparently allowed him to control the enormous body. He this will be fun, let's play, let's play until we die. The boy laughed darkly and innocently as he began to give orders to his body. The huge monster began to slowly advance towards Olympus. This put all the gods on alert. At ready, this is what we were talking about, Issei Haidu is attacking us, Zeus shouted in a commanding tone. The gods nodded as they prepared for combat, either summoning their respective weapons, or raising their power. Suddenly Issei stops being a medium distance from Olympus, this action of the brown-haired boy giant monster, confused the Olympians. What are you up to? Hades asked, his eyes half-closed as he looked at the creature. Suddenly a strange Liz appeared on the back of the enormous beast, a blue light, which grew larger with each passing second. Zeus opened his eyes in shock as he discovered his enemy's intentions. He's thinking about attacking, quickly protect Olympus. I shout, alerting the other gods. The large amount of electricity began to manifest on the monster's dorsal plates, and little by little this energy began to rise up its back until it reached its head. As the monster charged its attack, Zeus, Hades, and Poseidon began to attack it while it was motionless. Zeus threw powerful lightning bolts at the creature. Hades attacked with hellish flames. And Poseidon created great blades of water. However, none of these attacks managed to even phase the enormous beast, which continued to charge its attack patiently. Damn it doesn't work the god of the underworld shouted in frustration. The kind of energy a ring formed in front of the monster's snout, said ring shrank within a few seconds, turning into a kind of sphere of rays. Here he comes Zeus shouted, alerting all of Olympus. Without a second's hesitation, the imposing beast fired a great blast of energy targeting Mount Olympus and all its gods. All the gods put all their strength and created a great barrier to protect themselves from the attack. However, their efforts would be in vain. When the lightning struck the barrier it broke into millions of pieces as if it were fine glass. The attack continued its course until it hit the gods and then Mount Olympus. The attack would generate a powerful explosion, which shook the entire place, while raising a large curtain of smoke. The creature watched all this with a calm gaze, although the one controlling it was quite the opposite. Huh? Don't tell me you're already dead, bah, how disappointing, I was hoping to play with you a little longer. Issei said with disappointment while pouting childishly, suddenly something caught the brown-haired boy's attention, which made a macabre smile form on his face, haha <laughs> this is unexpected, but it's good it means we can still play. A small amount of smoke came out from the nape of the huge beast, to show the boy emerging from the large being. The boy's mocking gaze fell on the smoke screen, and the smoke quickly dissipated, revealing the result of his attack. The Olympian gods barely got up after receiving Issei's attack. They were badly injured, and unfortunately some had not managed to survive the lightning. Be damn it said Hades, his armor had many cracks, and it seemed like at any moment it would fall to pieces. Brother, the Nados and Hermes are dead. Poseidon said, looking with fury and hatred at the great creature, which began to disappear, turning into smoke. Zeus clenched his fists tightly, feeling his fury and hatred rise through the roof. Issei appeared in front of the surviving gods looking at them with his classic innocent smile. Hello Olympian gods, how are you? I see the Tanado-san and Hermes-san did not survive, oh well, they were too weak, they could not even withstand that small attack, therefore it was not my fault he said raising his arms in a sign of carefreeness. Faced with the attitude of the brown-haired boy, Zeus could not contain his fury. Damn monster, you will pay for all the lives you have destroyed in this war that you started the king of Olympus shouted with hatred. The god launched himself at great speed to attack the boy, who waited patiently. Once Zeus was just feelings away from hitting him, Issei out of nowhere, made a pair of twin swords appear in his hands, said swords had chains, more of which were wrapped around his arms. Using these swords he managed to block Zeus's blow without problems, when the god's fist hit the swords a large wind wave was generated. Zeus looked at the boy with fury and hatred, while the latter looked at him with a mocking smile and eyes full of madness. Damn monster. Zeus growled with hatred, using the force in his blow to try to push the boy back. Issei was not affected in the slightest by the words or the strength of the god of Olympus, he would give him a powerful kick in the stomach, forcing him to back away. That ready because the reign of Olympus will end here. The brown-haired boy exclaimed with an evil smile. Issei barely finished speaking when he easily dodged a blow from Hercules. 
you will pay for all the lives you took the Olympian champion shouted euphorically. Ugh, if I had a coin for every time someone told me that, I'd be a millionaire right now, he exclaimed with a mocking smile. Hercules only grew angrier at the boy's mocking and carefree tone. Using his lion head shaped gloves, the demigod launched a powerful blow, which was dodged by Issei, due to this said blow hit the ground generating a large crater. The boy didn't have time to rest when Athena attacked him with a spear. But again he easily dodged it. I'm disappointed in the path you've taken, Issei Haidu. The goddess of wisdom said seriously. And I'm disappointed that you're so weak. Using the chains as whips, he slashed with the swords of chaos, managing to injure Athena. Suddenly, some species of seahorses with crab legs made of rock launched themselves at him. The person responsible for generating these creatures was none other than Poseidon. Issei stuck one of his swords into the neck of one of those creatures, then used the chain to hit the rest with the corpse of the recently killed beast. He had barely finished off Poseidon's beasts when he had to dodge a powerful flare of hellfire, courtesy of Hades. Ares launched himself at the boy, while limbs like spider legs emerged from his back, and in his hand, he had a large sword. Issei blocked the god's attack with the blades of chaos. Ares covered his sword in fire and began to launch powerful and fierce attacks, which generated large heat waves throughout the place. The brown-haired boy jumped back, dodging a bolt of lightning courtesy of Zeus. Suddenly Apollo would try to kick him, his foot covered in solar fire. Without any problem the boy would stop the attack with his bare hand, leaving the sun god surprised. Your flames are very cold, he said with a bored and disappointed look. But bestial strength he grabbed the sun god's leg, and with the other, he used the sword of chaos and cut off his leg in a brutal scene. Apollo let out a heart-rending scream as he felt his amputated limb. Issei, not satisfied with that, stuck one of the swords into his stomach, and using the chain he slammed him to the ground, only to use the other sword to cut off his other leg. Apollo writhed in pain on the ground as jets of blood flowed from where his legs were. The brown-haired boy climbed on top of the god, and with his bare hands he grabbed him by the head. Apollo could simply feel the terror invade every part of his being as he felt the boy's hands on his head. Issei began to speak with great force to Apollo's head, who began to beg for mercy while trying to free himself from the deadly grip. After a few seconds, you could hear Apollo's neck bones breaking, and his skin and flesh began to tear in an extremely grotesque way. So that finally, with pure brute force, Issei ended up tearing off the head of the sun god. At the moment of tearing off his head, it had an expression of pain and grief in its purest state. Nah, that was disappointing, what do you think, Apollo-san? The boy childishly asked the decapitated head of the god. At the death of the sun god, hundreds of black clouds covered the entire continent, not letting even a single ray of light through. Wow the sky has darkened what an irony. The boy laughed amused. The gods were shocked to see how Apollo died in such a grotesque way. The mere fact of remembering this caused a great fury and hatred to begin to arise deep within the Olympian gods. Without hesitation, all the gods simultaneously launched themselves to attack the boy, who was waiting for them with a sadistic smile. I dodge a blow from Athena's spear to take said weapon and throw the goddess face first into Hercules, causing both of them to fall to the ground. He stopped Poseidon's trident with just one of his swords, and with the other he gave him a vertical cut in the chest. Jumping away from the god of the seas, he began to exchange blows with Hades and Ares at the same time. The chestnut uses both swords to block a combined attack from both gods. With a malicious smile he walks away from both of them and begins to concentrate a great amount of power into the blades of chaos. These weapons begin to be surrounded by a flaming aura, similar to fire. The boy strikes the ground with both swords, generating a tremendous shock wave that sends all the gods flying. The boy was starting to get bored, so he decided to put an end to the game. Issei sets his sights on the god closest to him, being the god of war Ares. With an evil smile he approached said god at full speed. This is noticed by the other gods, who worriedly try to warn him. Look out Ares Hera shouted. The god of war, seeing how the boy was less than a meter away from him, uses his sword as a shield to stop the attack a serious mistake. Issei's chaos blade split the god's sword in half, as if it were nothing, and stabs straight into Ares's chest. The god of war spits out a large amount of blood. Issei removes his weapons from the torso of the dying god, a large jet of blood comes out of the wound, and then a strong orange light covers Ares's body, and he disappears in reddish and orange particles. The other gods watch the scene in shock and helplessness. The god of war Ares had ceased to exist. For god of war, he was a terrible fighter, the boy said simply as he picked wax out of his ears in boredom. Behind the boy came Hercules, filled with murderous fury, ready to crush the brown-haired boy's head. The demigod's large fist was inches away from hitting the boy's head. However, and unexpectedly, Hercules's hand was cut off in less than a second. 
And if that were not enough, Issei now stood next to the god looking at him with disdain. You're boring I don't want to play with you anymore. He said with an indifferent look and a dead tone. Using both swords, the boy would split Hercules' body in two, who fell to the ground in agony, only to die seconds later. The next to attack was Athena, who attacked Issei using her spear. The boy blocked the attack with both swords of chaos. Stop it Haidu Issei, this has to stop, all you're doing is showing the world what a monster you are, the goddess shouted as she struggled with the brown-haired boy. Your words will accomplish nothing, goddess of intent, once all the supernatural dies, I will lead humanity into a new era of true peace and harmony, something you have never done, she shouted with a frown for the first time since the battle began. The boy applied much more force, ending up splitting Athena's spear in two. The goddess could not react when Issei plunged both swords into the stomach and neck of the goddess of wisdom. Athena couldn't say a word for obvious reasons, all she could do was slowly close her eyes, while her body disappeared into green particles of light. Issei looked at this with boredom before turning around and looking at his next victim. The god of the seas, Poseidon. The god was still seriously injured from Issei's previous attack. He struggled to get up, barely able to stand on his knees. The faction leaders showed too much benevolence to you, Poseidon said while bleeding heavily. The brown-haired boy simply kept his chaos swords on his back as he slowly approached the god. No matter how many factions fall, they will eventually rise again and confront you. They'll all fall eventually, the boy replied simply as he loomed over the badly wounded god. The death of Olympus will be a hard blow to the supernatural, he said, trying to prevent the brown-haired boy who was now in front of him from killing him. Then prepare to die Poseidon. The boy replied coldly, ignoring all the god's excuses. With pure brute force Issei grabbed Poseidon and gave him a brutal headbutt, causing bleeding to start from his forehead. Not satisfied with that, he grabbed him by the neck and gave him a fierce blow to the broken face, knocking his mouth against the floor. He grabbed him by the neck again and slammed his head against the ground, then lifted him off the ground and began to hit him repeatedly and brutally, causing the brown-haired boy's face and clothes to be stained with the blood of the god of the seas. Issei grabbed him by the hair and threw him against a nearby rock, causing the god's face to become deformed. Poseidon tried to crawl away from the boy, who didn't allow it and grabbed him by the face, and then stuck his thumbs in the eyes of the god of the seas. The god gave a heartbreaking cry of pain as he felt his eyes crushed. Already fed up with the screams of the god, Issei broke his neck, causing his head to look back. Without further ado, he released the corpse of the god of the seas, which dissolved on the floor, turning into a puddle of water. At the moment Poseidon died, the seas around the world began to shake violently, generating large wild waves and great tsunamis and floods. The brown-haired boy didn't have time for anything when he was forced to dodge an attack from Hades' sword, who no longer had the upper part of his armor, and looked at him with intense hatred. Oh, calm down Hades-san, I haven't forgotten about you, in fact I prepared something special for you. Then the boy's hands appeared some new weapons, which were some kind of claws made of a purple crystal. Issei dodged Hades's constant attacks at high speed until he ended up in front of him. Without hesitation the boy sinks those claws into Hades's chest. The god of the underworld lets out a deafening scream. Issei begins to pull with his weapons, while the purple energy was seen coming out of the god's body. Hades continued to scream as he felt agonizing pain. Finally all the energy leaves Hades and is absorbed by Issei's weapons. The boy had not only killed Hades, but it also absorbed his soul. Because of this, in the underworld all the souls and creatures that resided there now began to fly all over the place, creating great chaos, this due to the death of their ruler. The Sei turned around looking at the last two gods left. Hera and Zeus. The chestnut approached, walking slowly. The goddess thought he would go for her and tried to stand up, however she was surprised when the boy passed by her without even looking at her. This enraged the goddess beyond measure. You are a simple mortal said the queen of Olympus, staggering. The Sei ignored her and continued to ignore her. Do you think you can just leave like that? We're not done yet. She said, trying to hit him. The boy simply grabbed her face with one hand and threw her to the ground. Hera didn't even have the strength to stand up, she just watched as her crown fell to the ground, broken in two. What have you done? What have you done to me? He exclaimed, looking at the pieces of his crown. In a fit of rage, he threw the pieces aside while glaring at the boy with hatred. You're a coward. You destroy everything you touch. Hera tried to stand up, only to fall back to the ground. Ahahaha good luck with that boar you call Trahiksa. The goddess of marriage laughed with an arrogant look and a mocking smile. Issei stood still for a second, the tension in the atmosphere becoming suffocating for everyone. The boy had a monotonous, but at the same time gloomy look. Wow what a poor choice of words. He said in a voice from beyond the grave that chilled the goddess's blood. 
In less than a second he had already grabbed her by the neck, and with a simple squeeze, he ended up breaking her neck, killing her instantly. The chestnut released Hera's lifeless body, which barely touched the ground when it turned into thousands of flies, which scattered all over the place. Without further ado, Issei looked at the last survivor of the Olympic faction. Zeus, the king of the gods. Using the swords of chaos, he launched strong and powerful attacks, which hit the god head-on, causing a large amount of blood to flow from his wounds. The brown-haired boy threw the swords to the ground and grabbed Zeus by the beard, beginning to deliver blow after blow to his ugly and emaciated face. For every blow the boy gave him, a little blood splashed on his face. It got to the point where he couldn't see because of the blood and had to clean himself up. When he could see again, Issei contemplated the result. Zeus lay inert on the ground with his skull crushed and his brain scattered on the ground. The god's body was enveloped by electric rays, and then a huge lightning bolt fell from the sky onto the body. When the lightning disappeared, Zeus's body had disappeared. Due to the death of Zeus, a huge electrical storm began to form in various parts of the world. However Issei remained calm. And that makes three today well I guess I should fix the problem. He said as he snapped his fingers and made the disasters that were caused by the deaths of the gods disappear as if they had never existed. Wow, today was a tiring day more or less, it was fun playing with the Olympians. The brown-haired boy said with an innocent smile. Chapter 17. Goodbye friend. In Issei's mansion we could see the brown-haired boy in some kind of high-tech laboratory. It had been a week since he and his minions massacred three factions in a single day. Due to the death of Olympus, terrible natural disasters had been generated, such as earthquakes or electrical storms, which were resolved with just a snap by Issei. News of the deaths of the Akai, Nordic and Olympian factions spread like wildfire throughout the world, both human and supernatural. This undoubtedly caused the fear of supernatural beings to increase exponentially. But now we focus on what happens in that laboratory. The chestnut said absolutely nothing, in that room you could only hear the sound of the machines working. In the middle of that place there was a kind of giant crystal capsule, which inside had a kind of energy sphere, which emitted a strong emerald green light. Issei closed his eyes for a second, as if he was waiting for something. Here it comes he exclaimed as he opened his eyes. The sphere inside the capsule began to shine much more intensely, illuminating the entire place. Little by little a humanoid silhouette, more specifically a male silhouette, began to form inside the capsule. While this was happening, the brown-haired boy watched everything with a satisfied smile. When the silhouette finished forming, the result could be appreciated. The capsule had disappeared, as had the sphere. In his place now there was a young man who was apparently about 17 years old, his hair was red, and it was divided into several strands that fell over his forehead and shoulders, his eyes were a very bright jade green color, apart from wearing clothes that were mostly red. Ah the red-haired man growled as he barely managed to stay standing, bringing a hand to his head in pain. Issei looked at this smiling, finally the wait was over. The Alleg Revolver Avert Dragon. Indeed, that young red-haired man was none other than the Red Celestial Dragon and Issei's best friend, one of the few people who did not turn his back on him. The dragon, upon hearing his name, or more specifically hearing that voice he knew so well, instantly looked up, meeting the brown-haired boy's happy gaze. It's been a wild drag. The brunette greeted with a smile of true happiness. The dragon's eyes widened in shock as he looked at his companion and friend. Them partner he said, still in shock. Little by little her surprise changed to happiness when she realized the situation. You're alive the red-haired boy shouted, jumping and hugging his friend, who hugged his friend in return. They both separate and drag manages to see the brown-haired boy better. The but how, what what happened? I asked bewildered, looking at the high-tech laboratory. Calm down old friend, we have a lot to talk about. Issei said turning around and starting to walk. Greg simply followed his friend as he looked around the place carefully and curiously. They both left the laboratory, Drag looked at how they were in what appeared to be a mansion, and quite large. Let me fill you in Drag, while you were gone I awakened the power that was hidden within me for so long. Issei explained as he looked out one of the mansion's windows, Drag looked out the window curiously, only to open his eyes in shock, as he saw practically a huge space filled with bright stars, he even swore he saw a damn galaxy, the dragon turned his attention to his friend. Who was still walking many things have changed Drag, I have changed I am no longer the same idiot as before who only thought about breasts. The boy's voice sounded extremely relaxed and calm, but at the same time a gloomy tone could be noticed, one of those changes is that I have gained new allies. Greg was very confused by what his friend was saying, without him realizing it, they had both already reached the main room. The Welsh dragon's eyes widened in shock the moment he saw a certain purple-haired girl right in the middle of the room. If it weren't for the aura of power she radiated, I probably would have never recognized her. That aura which I could never forget. D this can't be h how are you free. 
The red-haired man asked in a choppy tone, barely coming out of his shock and looking at the woman. Trahiksa set her gaze on Drag, she remembered him perfectly, the dragon that had helped her new boss seal her. Nice to see you again, Welsh dragon. The purple-haired girl greeted with a mocking smile. Drake growled, looking annoyed at the beast of the apocalypse, he began to release his power, which was imitated by the woman. All this was happening while Lise was still looking at them with his typical smile, but with an anime style sweat to her. Alright, both of you, calm down. I don't want any fights in my home. The brown-haired boy ordered with all the calm in the world, not seeming intimidated by the auras of both beings. To the Welsh dragon's utter bewilderment, Trahiksa obeyed the order and stopped expelling her power. Without further ado, he also stopped releasing his power, but still kept his gaze on the woman, who continued to look at him with a malicious and mocking smile. Drake turned to the brunette, who remained unfazed by everything that had happened. Okay, buddy, I think you owe me too many explanations, he exclaimed, emphasizing the word too many. The brown-haired boy simply looked at his dragon friend, still keeping that innocent and carefree smile on his face. Drake felt very nervous seeing that smile, he felt that it was not just a normal smile, that smile hid something much darker. His instincts were practically screaming at him that his partner was now very, very dangerous. I understand your confusion Drake, so you better get going, this is going to take a while. The boy said as he sat down in one of the comfortable armchairs in the room. The Welsh dragon did the same without taking his serious gaze off the chestnut. Erisade began to explain to his friend everything that had happened, how he had declared war on the factions, how he had exposed the supernatural to the humans, how the heaven system had collapsed, how he defeated Trahiksa and made her his subordinate, how he convinced Kao Kao to join him, and how they massacred the Mayu and the Hindu, Yakai, Nordic and Olympian factions. At the end of his explanation, Drake's face reflected surprise in its purest form. To say I was surprised would be blasphemy, I was completely and utterly in shock. He couldn't believe what his partner had just said, he didn't want to believe him, but looking into his eyes, he couldn't find a single trace of lies Issa was telling the truth. I can't believe it the celestial dragon said, looking at his friend. I understand that you are surprised, but it is the truth, the boy said calmly. Drake was about to speak when he was interrupted by the brown-haired boy. Before you say anything else, I don't plan to stop with my plan. I plan to destroy all the supernatural factions. He exclaimed dryly. The dragon's eyes were wide open, he honestly expected his friend to feel hatred and resentment towards those who betrayed him, it was logical, but this was another level. You can't do that he shouted angrily. What they did to you was monstrous, but what you're allowing yourself to do is even worse. I understand that you killed those idiot Mayu, they deserved it, but we're talking about mass genocide here. You can't expect me to get away with such barbarity, the dragon was both angry and disappointed by his friend's decisions. Issei stared at his friend for a few seconds, during which time his face reflected a tiny smile, as if he found the Welsh dragon's words amusing. In a way Drake felt that the brunette didn't take him seriously, that look he gave him, felt like the look a father gives his son when he says something stupid. This goes beyond that Drake. Issei replied calmly, do you really think I'm doing this for stupid revenge? Well it's not entirely true, although I enjoy watching those little weirdos writhe until they die, my true motivation is something much bigger. Each word that came out of the boy's mouth only managed to make the dragon more and more nervous, I'm fed up with this good versus evil shit, that's something that always repeats itself no matter what you do, it doesn't matter that in the end peace is simply a silly dream, impossible to achieve unless you're a god, which is my case. I will eliminate all factions, and after that I will create a utopia, a real one, where not even beings from other worlds will be able to disturb the peace, and you know why. The brown-haired boy asked face to face with the dragon, who nervously shook his head because I, unlike other deities, would be there for them. The place had fallen completely silent after the words spoken by the former Sekiryute. Drake was completely in shock, was that really his previous carrier? Right now he had a hard time believing it. And what would you do with the dragons? The red-haired man asked with a serious look, although beads of sweat could be seen running down the side of his forehead due to his nerves. At this the boy simply smiled confidently. I was hoping you'd ask that. With that said, the brunette snapped his fingers, causing the three of them to disappear in a white glow. The three of them had appeared in a totally dark place, a place that seemed to be infinite, without a roof or floor, a place that they knew perfectly. The dimensional gap Drag said in barely a whisper as he looked around. Exactly, I think you might have an idea of why we're here, the brunette said, looking up. In front of them were two beings. One was a red dragon of immense size. And the other was a gothic-looking girl. The dragon gods. Great Red and Auroboros office. I think it goes without saying at this point that both dragons were surprised by the appearance of these three individuals. They say hi to. The Great Red Dragon said with a deep, gravelly voice. 
For her part, Office looked at the brown-haired boy with her typical stoic gaze, although if one looked closely, one could see a small trace of sadness. Nared Chan, Office Chan, how are you? The brown-haired boy raised his hand, greeting them with a friendly smile. This action left both dragons somewhat confused, who had a bad feeling when they saw the boy's smile. What do you want Haidu? This time it was Office who asked with a serious look. Hey, why are you so cold Office Chan? I thought we were friends the boy exclaimed, pouting childishly. Both Great Red and Office were visibly annoyed by the childish attitude of the genocidal maniac in front of them. Stop playing around, brat. Why have you come to see us? The dragon god asked, keeping an eye on the boy's every move. You're very boring. He growled with a mocking smile. I simply wanted to make a proposal that would benefit both you and dragons in general. This undoubtedly caught the attention of not only the dragon gods, but of Drag himself as well. If you want us to join you, you can forget about it. We will never join forces with a psychopath like you. Office said coldly. The both of their surprise, Issei simply shook his head while having an amused smile, as if what they had just said was funny to him. Nothing could be further from the truth, Office. What I really want is Issei's smile widened into a somewhat malicious smirk. I want you and all the dragons to leave this universe. The dragons present opened their eyes in shock at this statement from the brown-haired boy. I say, what do you mean by that? Drag asked with a lump in his throat. The boy just continued to stare at the dragon gods with his mischievous smile. It's simple Drag, the reason why I don't plan on eliminating the dragons is because you're my friend. The Welsh dragon became even more confused at these words, if that was even possible at this point, you're my friend Drag, and I highly doubt you'll sit back while I massacre your own race, am I wrong? The dragon stood still, unable to utter words, although his silence spoke for itself for that reason I'm giving the dragons this opportunity, if they accept I'll teleport them to a universe far away from this one, where they can live in perfect peace and harmony, without the intervention of humans or any other race, of course, except for the evil dragons, they will die. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back, great red, and Office's eyes were wide open in shock. Their minds were barely processing what they had just heard. But they still had doubts. And what is it that guarantees us that you are not deceiving us, what is it that confirms to us that you will not send us to some kind of horrible hell to die? The great god of dragons asked with complete serenity. The same doubt was shared by Auroboros and Drake. My word I swear to you in the name of the entire existing omniverse that I will fulfill my part of the deal. The brunette smile had disappeared and in its place was now a totally serious and cold face. The place fell completely silent at the boy's words. The dragon gods were analyzing these words. Both dragons looked at each other for a second, just by looking into each other's eyes, it was already clear what their decision would be. Alright we accept your offer. Great Red exclaimed seriously. At this Issei smiled. I'm glad we managed to come to an agreement, it was a pleasure meeting you, God of Dragons Great Red, and Goddess of Infinity Auroboros office goodbye. With that said, the brown-haired boy's eyes shone in a blinding white light, which illuminated the entire dimensional gap. Little by little the immense red dragon disappeared into particles of light until finally nothing remained of it. The same thing happened to Office, who before disappearing looked at the boy with a sad look. But it didn't stop there. Every dragon throughout the entire world disappeared into particles of light, except for the evil dragons, which turned into dust. Issei's eyes stopped glowing after a few seconds. He still had his typical smile on his face. I guess this is goodbye. The boy turned around and saw how Drag slowly disappeared into particles of light while he looked at him sadly. It was fun while it lasted, Drag. For the first time in a long time, Issei showed a truly sad expression. Half of the Gale's dragon's body had already disappeared into particles of light. I may not accept what you're doing, but I still hope you can find happiness someday goodbye my friend with those last words, the body of the dragon Gale's Drag completely turned into particles of light, which disappeared into the infinite darkness of the dimensional gap. All this under the sad and melancholic gaze of Issei. Bon voyage old friend. Chapter 18. Humans. A few hours had already passed after Issei said goodbye to Drag. We can see the brown-haired boy outside his mansion looking out at the wide multiverse. Behind the boy was Trahiksa, who looked at the boy with curiosity, since he didn't move a single finger, he was simply there contemplating the great cosmic void adorned with billions of stars and galaxies. Heisei's voice brought the woman out of her thoughts, who turned her gaze towards the brown-haired boy, I have a question for you Trahiksa the boy's voice sounded somehow much more serious and darker than normal, what do you think about humans? The boy's question surprised the purple-haired girl a little. Why do you want to know the Issei? She asked calmly, she no longer used honorifics to refer to him, somehow she felt that she no longer needed them. Just answer the question please, he exclaimed in a slightly softer tone. 
Giving a slight sigh, the beast of the apocalypse put on a serious look. I find them a disgusting race, beings who destroy themselves even without the help of the supernatural, they are just idiots, led by even more idiotic people who do not care in the least about the consequences of their actions, as long as they can achieve their goal. The purple-haired girl said coldly her opinion on the human race. Issei didn't say anything upon hearing his ally and apparent love interest's opinion on the human race. He didn't feel offended nor did he try to deny it. In the end, she was right. You're absolutely right, Trahiksa. The boy said simply as he looked at the great cosmos. If I may ask, why do you waste your time trying to help humans if you know they might try to betray you, right? The woman asked with a slight frown. At her words, the brown-haired boy didn't flinch in the slightest, he didn't even turn to look at her. I already know that perfectly well Trahiksa, I know everything, the past, the present and the infinite amount of futures that exist, that's why I know that humans won't be very happy, knowing that someone with my power exists, or at least the governments, they are the real problem. Issei said calmly. Since the chestnut tree revealed its existence to the world, human reactions have been quite varied. There were many of them who praised him as a god for having killed the mass. However, there always has to be something bad, and in this case it would be those humans who see it as a threat, of course, these are the governments. But they weren't a problem, not in the slightest, after all, in the world he was going to create, there would be no corrupt government standing in his way. It's time to show humans the true compassion of a god. Issei Haidu was walking calmly through the streets of a specific city Caracas. The other kid was in possibly one of the countries that needs the most help Venezuela. As the boy walked through the streets of that place he could see with his own eyes the situation in the country, people without work, homeless people, hunger, strikes, marches, attempts at revolution, everything was total and absolute shit, and all the synonyms that existed. You could practically smell the pain in the air. This made Issei frown for a second, only for a dark smile to appear on his lips a second later. The chestnut continued walking until he reached his destination. Mirafleur's palace. Issei looked at the palace with a sadistic smile, a big mess was going to happen. He created a magic circle in his ear calling out to Cow Cow. Cow Cow, contact every human being who praises or admires me in any way and tell them that there will be a change here very soon, said the brown-haired man. On the other side of the circle, the bearer of the true longinus listened to the orders of his boss and god, only to then sketch a dark smile, ready to comply with the order given to him. Time flew by in the corrupt country that is Venezuela, during this time it was spread by the followers of the Issei cult that their god born on earth had come to their country to finally free them from their misery and take them to a new golden age full of peace and happiness. This rumor not only reached the ears of the Issei cult but spread like wildfire throughout the country's inhabitants. People slowly began to believe that this was true and even a kind of revolutionary army was formed under the wing of the god they called the Absolute. This was irrefutable proof of how far humans' desperation could go, to escape their misery, they could come to believe in something that might not be true, although this was not the case. The sun's rays illuminated Venezuela on a new day, a new day that at first glance, seemed to be the same as any other day in a country led by a corrupt leader. There was just one small detail. This was no ordinary day. It was the day when a new era began in Venezuela. Through the streets of Caracas a person with brown hair walked calmly, without any concern. An innocent and happy smile plastered almost permanently on his face. The sound of his footsteps was drowned out by all the chaos happening around him. His army was overwhelming the Venezuelan military and police. Many will wonder what army is being used this time. Any alien species? No. Mythological creatures? Not really. Magical or interdimensional beings? Definitely not. Unlike with the supernatural factions, Issei instead of using some kind of creatures, was using the same humans who lived in Venezuela. All of Venezuela had joined him upon hearing of his arrival and had united and risen up against his corrupt government. Obviously the boy had armed them to the teeth so that they were guaranteed victory. From high-caliber firearms to futuristic weapons such as laser beams and plasma grenades, including force fields. The sound of gunshots echoed through the streets of Caracas. There were thousands of corpses of police and military personnel adorning every neighborhood to the point that you couldn't even see the ground. Damn, there were even children who pretended to be innocent to fool some soldiers, only to later blow their heads to pieces with a hidden weapon. That may be considered cowardly, but they were in a bucking war, and in a war there is no honor, only life and death. Issei simply walked towards his target as he watched his followers take justice into their own hands. While watching all this he remembered the reason for his actions. He was already fed up with all this good guy versus bad guy shit. It always repeated itself, and even if in the end the good guy won, it would simply be a matter of time before someone worse than the previous one came along to screw up what had been achieved, it was a cycle that was doomed to repeat itself for all eternity. And why is this? 
because of a supposedly stupid balance between good and evil. But at what cost? If at the end of the day, others were always going to suffer because of this balance. Decided to leave this good and bad shit behind. Well he could destroy the entire damn universe just by thinking about it, that would be of no use. If he had to, what would he do next? Floating forever in nothingness would be too boring. The funny thing is that he didn't really need an army or subordinates, he could have created his world with just a snap of his fingers, but where's the fun in that? That's why he decided to turn his world into a paradise where no one has to suffer, but to do that he had to definitively eliminate the supernatural, he knew that sooner or later they would end up ruining his world, apart from a little revenge it doesn't hurt anyone except them. While his army was in charge of massacring the Venezuelan forces, the brown-haired man was now in the presidential office seeing the leader Nicolas Maduro. Needless to say, the president was scared shitless. Good morning Mr. President, how are you on this beautiful morning? Issei asked mockingly as he saw the fear and desperation on the president's face. No, no, get away from me you damn monster he screamed in terror as he fell to the ground and began to back away. The brown-haired boy simply let out a light laugh at seeing the president's fear. You know, monster is a relative term, for a canary a cat is a monster, and you got used to being the cat. With slow and calm steps he began to approach the president, who in his agitation, took a pistol out of his pocket and began shooting at the boy's clothes, burning them. Issei simply rolled his eyes in amusement at the president's futile attempt to save his pathetic life. The boy didn't even have to lift a finger when the bullet stopped in midair a meter away from him, he simply blew and turned the bullets into dust. Nicholas became more terrified when he saw this, he was about to shoot again when suddenly his gun turned into pure gold, due to the weight he had no choice but to drop the gun, which fell to the ground with a thud. How strange, I thought corrupt leaders liked gold and riches, the brown-haired man said with a dark smile. The president would stand up as quickly as possible and try to run out the window of the place. Oh of course not, Motherbaker. Issei exclaimed, shooting a small beam from his finger. The lightning bolt struck the president in the back, causing him to fall like a sack of potatoes on the ground. He tried to stand up, only to find that he couldn't move his legs. What the hell did you do to him, you bucking psychopath? Nicholas screamed in terror. Oh, me? He asked, pointing at himself with an innocent smile. I just made a small adjustment to your spine, in other words, I just left you paralyzed for life. What the god said left the president even more terrified, if that was even possible at this point. Issei decided to put an end to this once and for all. He grabbed the paralyzed president, grabbed him by the neck, dragged him to the balcony, and there you could see a huge number of people, like 80% of Venezuelans, shouting furiously at their president. Do you like it, you useless little one? In less than a day I achieved what you couldn't achieve in years, one to all of Venezuela, and this is what will happen to all the countries of the world, their corrupt governments will become nothing more than a simple memory, I will give them true peace. Issei said with an innocent, but at the same time dark smile. No, no, please, I beg you, have mercy, I will give you anything the president begged in the purest desperation, to the point that he had begun to cry profusely, feeling the purest terror. The chestnut simply lifted him over the edge of the balcony, entering right above the Venezuelans, who were screaming for the man's blood. Oh, I'm sorry Mr. President, but Issei's gaze twisted into a smile filled with sharp fangs as tears of blood flowed from his eyes. You don't deserve mercy. But that said, the brown-haired boy released Nicholas, who fell on top of the huge mob of furious Venezuelans. Issei watched with great satisfaction and happiness as people beat, stabbed, and tore apart the body of their former leader. That day Venezuela had recovered what it had lost so long ago. Their freedom. But also, the humans had seen someone who truly cared about them. It wasn't the governments that gave them empty promises and exploited them to death. But this being, this god born among men. His savior. Final chapter perfect victory. Several months have passed since Issei completely took over Venezuela, and things in the country had changed completely, but for the better. As he promised, a new golden age had begun in Venezuela. He had rebuilt the entire country in less than a second. He had become the supreme ruler of all of Venezuela, and the people were totally happy about it. Terms like poverty, hunger, crime, among others, were nothing more than a mere memory. Venezuela was no longer dependent on any other country for anything, it had become completely independent, not to mention that there was no longer contaminated water or logging and burning of forests, and those that were affected were rebuilt by Issei. Venezuela had become what many countries only dream of being, a true utopia, people lived their lives peacefully and without problems, crime had even reached the incredible figure of 0%, something simply wonderful. Not to mention the incredible technological advances they had achieved thanks to Issei. The other countries of the world had learned about this, thanks to a worldwide conference that the chestnut tree organized. The reactions were varied. 
the civilians of the different countries were surprised and at the same time happy, since the god demonstrated that he was telling the truth and was going to improve the world. However, the governments did not have the same reaction, they were totally terrified, it was already confirmed, that boy would go for their heads, and not all the security or nuclear weapons in the world would save them. The list could go on for hours, but let's get to the interesting stuff. We can see a say in a huge luxurious mansion, with many devices in the most futuristic style. In a small bar to her left was Trahiksa having a small glass of wine. Now I understand why humans like to drink this so much, it doesn't taste bad. Said the beast of the apocalypse while calmly and elegantly drinking his wine. For his part, Cow Cow was playing God of War 4 on a full HD flat screen, and I don't know what else to put XD. What have I missed, these games are amazing. Exclaimed the bearer of the true Longinus while he was in the fight against Baldur. Trust me, there are many more games where that one came from. Issei said as he relaxed on an armchair. But the brown-haired man said only brought a smile to the black-haired man's face, who continued with his game calmly. Yep, the three of them were living the dream, they had a wonderful life, but there were still things to do. Suddenly a light smile appears on Issei's lips. Oh, how interesting, he said in an inaudible whisper as his gaze turned dark. The end was near. In the underworld things were shit. There were guards literally everywhere, watching every nook, corner and neighborhood. All the inhabitants lived with the deepest fear in their hearts, they did not even go hunting anymore, the cities had become ghost towns. But now we focus on the Gremory mansion, in the room were gathered Rhea's parents, Grafia, Rhea's herself with her entourage and Issei's former harem. The atmosphere in the place was extremely tense and also depressing, everyone showed sad and worried expressions, and how could they not be, most of the factions had become extinct, and it was only a matter of time before Issei came for them. Well, I'll get straight to the point, this is possibly the worst time in the entire history of the supernatural. Seoticus Gremory said with complete seriousness. Everyone had to agree with the red-haired man's words, almost all the factions had been destroyed, and the few that still existed had their magic on the ground, they could barely perform basic spells. Calm down Odo-sama, I know things are bad, but with what we managed to discover we will be able to fix all this chaos, everything will return to how it was before Rizavim deceived us. Rhea said with a big smile and her eyes shining with hope. Let's hope your plan works Rhea's, otherwise it will be the end of all the factions. Venelana said with a serious but at the same time sad look. We must have faith in Rhea's, Venelana Sama, after all, what else can we lose? Grafia exclaimed with a dull and sad look. In that case, you better start preparing everything to perform that spell. With the system collapsed, our power is at rock bottom, so we'll need all the magic we can gather. The Grimory Patriarch ordered firmly. Rhea's just nodded at what her father had said and then left the place with her entourage. The place fell into a deep silence, which was broken by a heavy sigh from the red-haired man. Do you think I can do it? I asked, looking at his wife. Then Alana just kept a sad look for a few seconds before answering. We have to wait, only time will tell. But it finally arrived. The moment that Issei waited so long for. The moment where he would deliver the final blow. All three were in their positions. Each one had his own army to attack the faction that corresponded to him. Trahiksa stood in front of Grigori. Cao Cao looked at the gates of heaven with a dark smile. And Issei looked with a macabre look at the city of Lilith, the demonic capital. After so long attack. With that slight whisper from Issei, his subordinates, who despite being very far away, managed to hear it in their minds. And without further delay, they began the attack. Mugger music, the brown-haired boy said, smiling sadistically. I surrendered under the knife. Trahiksa's body shone with a resplendent purple light, her silhouette slowly deforming until it became her giant form. The beast of the apocalypse. Your innocence to consume. But Cow Cow, he summoned his true longiness as he approached the gates of heaven at a slow and menacing pace. You cut it. Trahiksa's back began to deform grotesquely, however this did not seem to hurt or cause her any harm in the slightest. In a kind of explosion, thousands of beings would come out of his back. These beings had a humanoid signature, they seemed to have no skin, being almost skeletons, their head was a skull with only a hole in the forehead, not to mention that their head seemed to be divided in two, they had claws and sharp teeth, they had some kind of dorsal plates on their backs, and finally a long tail that ended in a bony and sharp tip. And you filled me with hate. Cao Cao was already in front of the gates of heaven, using his true longiness, he launches a strong slash, destroying them with extreme ease. You sent me into silence. The dark fog began to appear behind the black-haired man, and from within that fog, a large number of red dots could be seen shining brightly. From the fog emerged a huge number of creatures of different shapes and sizes. They looked like they had animal shapes, like bears, wolves, coyotes, elephants, tigers, etc. 
But what all these beasts had in common was their coal black skin, their red eyes shining with bloodlust, bones sticking out of different parts of their bodies, and white masks that seemed to be made of bones. Consumed by fire. Behind a say, a huge number of portals began to open, and from these portals his army began to emerge. Magical creatures. Interdimensionals. Aliens. The answer is a little bit of everything. You thought I would forget it. The chestnut tree raises its left hand to the sky, while a reddish aura surrounds it. Suddenly, millions of souls in pain appeared on the scene, the creatures of Issei's army almost went deaf due to the heartbreaking screams, wails, and cries of the souls. These souls were absorbed by the reddish aura that the boy carried in his hand. As the great whirlwind of souls was absorbed by Issei's hand, he had a huge evil smile, which was so big that it began to deform his face, showing that his teeth turned into sharp fangs, the shadow of his bangs covered his eyes, which shone with a crimson red. A couple of seconds passed, which to the creatures seemed like hours, and the boy's hand an object began to manifest, as the seconds passed the object took more and more shape until finally it could be clearly seen what it was. The whirlwind of souls disappeared and the result could be seen. The millions of lost souls had turned into a beautiful sword, whose blade was silver in color, had details in a deep red color, almost burgundy, its handle was dark brown, not to mention that said weapon radiated enormous power. But it's always in my head. The brown-haired boy had taken the millions of souls that were in the underworld of the deceased Hades and had used them to create a new weapon. A new Excalibur. Excalibur Requiem Issei whispered, looking happily at his new weapon. The boy didn't say anything else, he simply pointed his gun forward, that was more than enough. But the war cry, the armies of Trahixa, Kao Kao and Issei, launched themselves towards their targets at maximum speed. You are the pulse in my veins. You are the war one fight. The three armies began to destroy everything in their path. The humanoids of Trahixa attacked the fallen angels ferociously and savagely, who did everything possible to counterattack the monsters. However, all efforts were useless because they tore the fallen apart with their sharp claws or stabbed them with the tips of their tails. Can you change me? Pao Kao's grim army began to destroy everything in their path. The ground began to be stained with the blood of the angels. Although they managed to destroy some of the monsters with their spears of light, the enormous number of these creatures left them at a huge disadvantage. Can you change me? Ferocious beasts slowed down everything that stood in their path. There were dinosaurs that tore demons apart in their jaws, the most notable being the Indominus Rex, which wasted no time ferociously devouring everything that got in its way. The large amount of electric rays destroy a large number of demons, this from a hooded person who laughed darkly. The demons tried desperately to defend themselves from Issei's enormous army, however this was impossible, both due to the numerical difference and the difference in power. You are the love that I hate. Issei's army was ravaging the underworld. The pyramid-headed humanoid being was cutting the demons to pieces with a huge knife-like sword. Several lakes shot bright green rays towards the demons, completely disintegrating them. The large shadow with several tentacles and orange lights on its body destroyed everything in its path without problems. A huge three-headed golden dragon had created a powerful thunderstorm throughout the place, while shooting powerful lightning bolts from its three mouths, killing many demons. You're the drug I take. Will you cage me? A large number of slayers killed a large number of demons, either with machetes, clawed gloves, chainsaws, or directly with their bare hands. Hell, there was even a big, muscled guy standing there breaking the backs of everyone who got in his way. Issei simply stood in place watching his army slaughter everything that stood in front of them. This time it was their turn to have fun. Will you cage me? You are the pulse in my veins. You are the war one fight. For his part, Trahixa and his humanoids continued to mercilessly destroy the city of Grigori. The fallen angels took flight believing they would have an advantage in the air. However, the hole in the humanoids' heads began to glow with a purple light, only for these beings to then begin firing a powerful beam of energy. These rays traveled at enormous speed, managing to kill a large number of people. Trahixa, on the other hand, was in charge of destroying buildings, either by hitting them or by throwing fireballs. Can you change me? Can you change me? Of the monster you've turned me into. Pao Kao advanced, making his way through the sky. The grim army mercilessly destroyed the angels. The situation for the angels only got worse when a gigantic grim dragon appeared creating more grims. The group of angels pounced on the black-haired man, he only sketched a smile, and with a simple movement of his true longiness, he tore the angels into pieces. Of the monster you've turned me into. Several demon clans appeared to defend the city. Even Team Vali had come out to face Issei's creatures. Among them the clans, Citri, Agares, Phoenix, Bale, etc. We have to buy time for Rias to finish the spell, that's our last hope of fixing everything. Sona thought seriously as she looked at Issei's massive army. This is the world you have created. 
At the Gremory mansion, Ria's and her entourage were working as quickly as possible to finish the spell, their ace up their sleeve. While they did this, images of all the destroyed factions, so many lost lives, passed through the Ritid's mind. She knew it was her fault, it was her fault for turning her back on Issei, but she knew that if they managed to perform this spell, everything would go back to the way it was before. The result of what I have become. My soul and my youth. Issei looked at all the destruction and death his army was generating with a big dark smile. Yet despite all the chaos his troops were wreaking, there was one building that hadn't suffered a single scratch. The Gremory Mansion. It seems that they are only for your use. Michael along with Gabriel and the other Archangels, went out to confront the Grimms. They managed to eliminate several of these monsters, creating a small hope in the other angels. However, that hope disappeared as quickly as it came when the head of one of the Archangels was pierced by the tip of the true Longinus. Those present watched in horror as the Archangel's corpse fell to the ground while bathing in a pool of his own blood. If I could take back the moment. The three factions continued to be massacred by Issei's forces. Every second that passed, hundreds of angels, fallen angels and demons were killed, either by Trahixa's humanoids, Cow Cow's grims, or by someone from Cow Cow's army. I would let you under my skin. Do you give in or do you oppose? In a Grigori, which was 70% destroyed, Azazel, Penemu, and Akeno's father would finally come out to fight against the enemy forces. Arachiel would launch a large amount of lightning, managing to eliminate a group of these monsters. However, more of these same ones would appear again. The number of these creatures increased more and more every second. Fire and destruction began to slowly consume the city of Grigori. All this under the helpless gazes of Azazel, Penemu and Barakiel. The large army of humanoids began to approach the three fallen, while behind them was Trahixa destroying everything with powerful fireballs. Apparently the monster always wins. The sky began to slowly turn a deep red, this due to the blood of the angels, which were torn apart by the great variety of grims. The or the pulse in my veins. The or the war one fight. In the underworld things only went from bad to worse. The Agar's clan had been completely massacred at the hands of sorcerers, who were responsible for reducing them to nothing more than mere ashes. Iku had been killed by a beast about two meters tall, full of muscles, and with sharp bones sticking out from all parts of its body. It only took a mere blow to crush the head of Sun Wukong's descendant and end his life. Razor Phoenix was flying while throwing several fireballs with all his might. While this seemed to work at first, as it managed to eliminate a few monsters. His glory ended the moment the great golden dragon hit him with a powerful lightning bolt, which sent him crashing to the ground, seriously injured. It is worth mentioning that his regeneration was almost useless. The blonde's pieces tried to go help him, however they could not advance when the pyramid-headed humanoid cut off their path, already a few heads. In the end, the blonde phoenix was reduced to dust when the gigantic golden dragon launched three powerful bolts of lightning from its three heads, which hit the blonde demon squarely. Can you change me? Can you change me? Things weren't going so well in Grigori either. One of Trahixa's humanoids had shot Barakiel purple for a while, said attack ended up destroying one of his wings, causing him to begin to plummet. Enemu tried to go help him, but was intercepted by a blow from Trahixa, said blow ended up breaking many of the bones in his body. Both of them fell into the middle of a huge mob of humanoids, who tore them apart with their sharp teeth, claws and tails. I'm sorry Issei was the last thing the most beautiful woman thought as the humanoids tore her apart and ate her flesh. You're the love that I hate. In heaven most of the angels had been killed by Grimm. For his part, Cow Cow had an archangel pierced by his spear in his chest. The black-haired man pulled out his spear, letting the archangel's corpse fall to the ground with a loud thud. You're the drug I take. Gabriel would launch a powerful spear of light against a grim nevermore, reducing it to ashes, however this left her quite tired, since she had used most of her magic in that attack. Because of this, she couldn't react when the black-haired man appeared in front of her and gave her a lethal cut in the stomach, said cut was so severe that it caused her to end up falling to the ground with the troops outside, while she felt the life fade from her body. Michael watched this in horror and tried to go help his sister. However, a large horde of Grimm prevented him from doing so. The overlord of the skies could only watch as his sister's life slowly faded away. The say please forgive me was the last thought of the purest angel before dying painfully in a pool of her own blood. Will you cage me? Will you cage me? The demon clans continued to fight with everything they had against Issei's army. Although things didn't seem to be working out. The Fae Pendragon had died after being devoured by the Indominus Rex, which chewed her into a puree before swallowing her. Her brother, Ardor, became enraged at seeing his sister's death and attempted to go kill the Indominus. However, he couldn't even take a step when a man in a yellow suit ran at full speed and cut him in half with a single blow, only to continue on his way as if nothing had happened. The Phoenix clan had already been completely massacred by the pyramid-headed entity. 
Sarah Erg Bale was using his brute force to fight the creatures, due to the collapse of the sky system all the sacred gears had stopped working, including his. Half of the Citri clan had died in battle. Saji had been the first to die, without his sacred gear he was totally useless. The blonde man had died when a tall thin faceless humanoid being in an elegant suit split him in half with tentacles coming out of his back. You're the pulse in my veins. You're the war one fight. Grigori was completely in ruins, some parts were even on fire. The corpses of the fallen angels were scattered all over the place, some broken in half and others torn to pieces beyond recognition. And in the middle of all that destruction was Azazel on his knees, completely exhausted and without any magic. Can you change me? The sky was completely stained with the blood of the angels, whose corpses were devoured by the grims. The whole place was reduced to nothing more than ruins. In the middle of that place, and in the room where God once was, was Michael completely wounded and without magic, he was missing an arm, and a large amount of blood was falling down his forehead. In front of him stood a completely unharmed cow cow, looking at him with a mocking smile. Can you change me? Bali didn't last long, his sacred gear barely worked thanks to Albion's help. I don't remember if the Longinus could still function even without the sky system. Lucifer's descendant was killed when a giant demon, with four eyes and horns on his head, fired a powerful beam from his eyes, completely disinheriting him. For some reason the beasts did not kill Kuroka, they simply tore off her arms, but they did not kill her, that honor belonged to their leader. The Bale clan had already fallen. Sarah Erg died when a being of extremely grotesque appearance, with four bullets and seven mouths, pierced his chest with one of his arms, taking out his heart in the process, causing the black-haired man to die a few seconds later. Issei watched with a dark smile as only half of the Citri clan remained. Deciding it was time for him to have some fun he began to raise his hand where he held Excalibur Requiem. His army moved out of the way, sensing that their leader was about to attack. The brown-haired boy had his sword shining with a crimson aura, looking maliciously at the weakened Citri clan, who could barely stand. The truth is that the boy's army was just messing with them, after all, what's the fun in finishing everything quickly? Of the monster you've turned me into. Grigiksa charged a large fireball aiming at the weakened Azazel, who was kneeling on the ground of the devastated Grigori. Cao Cao held his true longinus firmly as he pointed it towards the weakened leader of the heavens. And Issei had already concentrated a large amount of energy into Excalibur Requiem. Of the monster you've turned me into. The three of them launched their attacks at the same time. Grigiksa's fireball hit Azazel squarely, who simply closed his eyes, feeling his entire body turn into nothing more than mere ashes, until he simply ceased to exist. Cao Cao launched a powerful thrust with the true longinus, tarnishing Michael and piercing his heart, ending the life of the overlord of the heavens. And Issei slashed through the air with Excalibur Requiem. This action generated a powerful burst of crimson energy, which shot out from the blade of the sword. This attack hit the rest of the Citri clan. Riaz I entrust you with the future of the factions and of the entire supernatural world. Was the last thing the Citri heiress thought as she and her entourage were disintegrated by the boy's attack. My heart is an artifice, a decoy soul. Issei watched with a happy smile as the entire city of Lilith was completely destroyed, leaving only one building standing the Gremory Mansion, completely intact and without a single scratch. The best for the end. The macabre smile formed on his face, he couldn't contain his emotion. Bring them to me, he ordered in a dark voice. With a war cry in the purest 300 style, Issei's entire army rushed towards the Gremory Mansion. The brown-haired boy looked at this with satisfaction, while Trihiksa and Cao Cao appeared at his sides in magic circles. I'll pick you up and then let you go. Inside the Gremory mansion everything was chaos. Everyone was practically scared shitless. Asper was crying out of fear, he had even peed himself. Asia was in a corner hugging her legs while trembling with fear and tears kept coming out of her eyes. Seoticus for his part simply had his head down while clenching his fists to the point that they began to bleed, he couldn't hide it, even with his backup plan, he was terrified. Then Alana approached her husband and hugged him with love while also crying. Rafia hugged Milikas, who trembled with fear. I created art by digging deep holes. Laugh quickly, we need that spell right now, the army is coming for us, the Gremory Patriarch shouted in anger. It's not ready yet, it's still missing some details, we can't use it yet, I need more time, the Redeed replied while holding a kind of golden scroll floating in front of her. Time is what we don't have his father replied, increasingly frightened. The man fell silent when his wife's hand touched his shoulder. Siodica saw the sad look on the brunette's face. Riaz you have to go, Venalana said, looking at her daughter with great sadness and regret. The Redeed's blue eyes widened in shock at her mother's words. But Oka-san, I can't leave, this is our chance, if we manage to use the spell everything will go back to normal, if I leave I won't be able to. The Redeed's voice was interrupted when her queen spoke. 
I think what your mother is trying to say, Rias, is that you must leave the underworld. Akeno said seriously and sadly, the redeed's expression turned to one of horror when she understood her best friend's words, we will buy you time while you finish the spell, we will give you all the magic we have left, so you can complete it faster. No, I won't leave, I won't run away, not again, I don't want to lose them, I, I don't want to lose anyone else, I lost the man I love because of my stupidity, and not only that I also lost my brother, I don't want you to die because of me too Rhea screamed as her eyes filled with tears. But there is no other option Rias. if we don't complete this spell all the lives that were lost will have been in vain, if everything goes well we will be able to see each other again, I beg you Rias. I know you're scared, but you have to do this not only for us, but for the entire supernatural world. Akeno screamed as she also began to cry. It also hurt her to have to say goodbye to her best friend, and she was also terrified by the idea of dying. I let the darkness fall and watch it grow. The Gremory's eyes were filled with tears, and her body was trembling from fear and helplessness. They're getting closer Zenovia shouted, watching through the window as Issei's army got closer and closer to the mansion. Then Alana approached her daughter, looking at her sadly. You have to fix our mistake Rias, I know you can do it, said the MILF hugging her with all her love and affection. Rias cried on her mother's shoulder, knowing that this might be the last time she would hold her. Her father also joined the hug along with the rest of the Redeed's entourage. When they parted the Redeed had a serious expression on her face. I'm ready. But that said, everyone present began to pass their magic on to the Redeed. With each passing second, Rias felt her power increasing, however, at this time the army was getting closer and closer to the mansion. Finally those present gave all their magic to the demon. She took one last look at her family and entourage, who were looking at her with a sad smile. Goodbye I love you. She said as she created a magic circle I promise I'll fix all of this. She thought before disappearing completely as a tear fell down her cheek. My heart is an artifice, a decoy soul. As soon as the redeed left, the door of the place was knocked down by a demogorgon, which was blonde, alerting those present. The kind of humanoid being completely red, with completely wide eyes and a smile full of sharp teeth, lunged at Rhea's parents. Theodicus pushed his wife away to protect her from the being's attack. Because of this the redeed was impaled by the monster's sharp claws. The creature, not satisfied with that, pulled out several tentacles from its back and used them to tear the arms and legs of the Grimmery Patriarch, who could only give heart-rending screams of pain as he felt his limbs being mutilated. Already tired of listening to his screams, the reddish being split the man in half, causing his blood and guts to bathe his body. Then Alana watched in horror as her husband's brutal death occurred. However, she didn't ask to do anything when a paradamon grabbed her by the neck and pierced her stomach with his other hand. But the being did not stop there, but released her neck to grab her by the head and begin pulling in opposite directions, causing the MILF to scream in pain. Within a few seconds, Venalana's body split in half, just like her husband's. Rhea's entourage looked at this in horror. Asper tried to escape desperately, but a kind of robot with a shotgun shot him, blowing his head to pieces. The rest of the entourage, with no other options, surrendered, at least they had to gain time against Rias. The same with Grafi and Milikas, although the monsters did not harm the little Redeed, which left the maid bewildered. Who knew the void could be so cold? While this was happening the Redeed had appeared in the remains of the Kuo city, for some reason they had not rebuilt it since Issei's fight with the Mao. The girl ran desperately while tears came out of her eyes. This would begin to transfer a lot of magic to the golden scroll in her hands. On the other hand, the brown-haired soldiers had brought the women of their former harem, including an armless Kuroka. The boy was sitting at a round table next to Trahiksa and Kao Kao. Issei smirked as he stood up, looking at the Redeed's entourage. This is perfect, it's been so long, you don't know how much I missed you. The boy said with a dark smile that didn't convey anything good. I say San. Asia said, trembling in fear. Suddenly a stake came out of God knows where and pierced the ex-nun's arm, sending her straight to the ground. The blonde let out a huge scream of pain at this, which scared her friends even more. Don't talk to her, witch. The brunette said in a cold and cruel tone. The girl was crying both from the physical pain and the emotional pain of hearing the person she swore to love call her that way, you know Asia, you were always one of the most precious to me. The boy began to speak as he approached the blonde, I never expected that of all of you you would turn your back on me, I always saw you so defenseless, so fragile, so weak so useless. His tone of voice changed to a colder one, suddenly another stake pierced the other arm, you know, you were always useless, but not only useless, but also a coward, you're afraid of everything, and you also didn't have the will to do anything, and that's what I hate most about you. I say San. The blonde said barely audibly while crying. I have lost the parts that compliment me. A small tear of blood came out of Issei's left eye. The matter Asu. With that simple word, the former nun's entire body was surrounded by black flames. 
it was barely a second, just one second it took for those flames to turn the blonde's body into nothing more than mere ashes, but to her, it felt like an eternity of immense pain, she wanted to scream, to ride, but she simply didn't have time when she found herself reduced to nothing more than dust. He witches have to be burned, don't you think that's okay? I asked with a dark smile looking at the rest. The girls watched in horror as their friend was brutally murdered by the man they once loved. I am the darkness. Rias ran through the destroyed streets of the devastated Kuo city as she prepared her spell. As she ran she could see the places where she and her friends lived their adventures. The Keno Temple. The Academy Kuo. The Occult Club Room. Issei's House. Just seeing them caused enormous pain in his heart and an unimaginable feeling of guilt. I'm the monster. Each and every member of Issei's former harem was killed in brutal and extremely painful ways. Ravel died when her blood turned into lava, due to this the blonde phoenix literally cone-shaped from the inside out, dying horribly in less than 20 seconds when her body was charred. He ripped off Kaneko and Kuroka's ears and Nekamata tails, then he grabbed the albino loli by both legs, lifted her over his head, and in a display of pure barbarity, he split her in half, because of this the little girl's organs and blood bathed her older sister, who cried in helplessness as she watched her little sister die in agony. As for Kuroka, he literally shoved a spear up her ass, tearing apart all of her internal organs, to the point that the sharp line of the spear came out of her mouth, the Nekamata's corpse was left hanging with an expression of horror and agony. In the purest blad teep style. He took the Durandal from Zenovia and used that same sword to pierce her stomach and then cut off her head. Vesuius was devoured when Issei summoned a giant shark head, which chewed and crushed her with its sharp teeth. The Valkyrie screamed in pain as she felt her bones breaking and her insides crushed to the point of turning into puree. You are the pulse in my veins. His gaze fell on his childhood friend Irina, who looked at him with a sad smile. Just because we were childhood friends, there won't be any torture, the brunette said with an innocent smile, and with a mere snap of his fingers, the angel's heart stopped. The brunette's eyes lost their shine and then closed forever. The boy looked at his new victim. Brafia Lucifuge, the maid protectively hugged her son as she looked at Issei in fear. The brown-haired boy approached her slowly until he ended up in front of both of them. You're the war one fight. I can only promise you that your son will be happy. With that said, Issei touched the silver-haired girl's forehead with his index finger. Immediately, Grafia's body turned into an ice statue, which broke into pieces within a few seconds in front of a horrified Milikas. Issei looked at the boy with a look of compassion. You were the only one who didn't turn his back on me, apart from Drag, you don't deserve to suffer. He said with a calm voice. Milikas watched as the brown-haired boy gently touched his forehead. Suddenly the little Redeed's body began to disappear into golden particles, which rose up into the sky, disappearing from everyone's sight. Within a few seconds the child's body disappeared completely, leaving no trace. Can you change me? Can you change me? The boy's gaze landed on the reddish sky of the underworld. You don't deserve to suffer Milikas, you will be reborn in another universe, you will have a new life, a loving family, good friends you will live happily, I promise you. He said with a somewhat sad smile. You are the love that I hate. The boy turned around looking at the last one left alive. The kennel looked at Issei in complete terror. The boy approached at a slow and intimidating pace until he reached the black-haired girl. First of all I want to tell you that I already know where Rias is, and once I'm done with you I'll go get her, once she's dead, I'll be able to control everything calmly. The brunette said smiling darkly. The Kendo couldn't say anything, fear wouldn't let her, seeing how the man she once loved murdered all her friends in cold blood had left her more than traumatized. The boy raised his hand towards Akeno. The next thing the fallen half felt was an immense pain running through his entire body. And of course, reddish stakes began to emerge from all parts of her body, Issei was manipulating the blood inside her to inflict pain on her from within. She said she hated her fallen angel blood, well she didn't have to worry about that anymore. But the chestnut was not satisfied with just that. You're the drug I take. Powerful crimson red lightning bolts began to fall upon Akeno's body. The girl could only writhe in pain as she felt electricity run through her body. Not even she could handle that much electricity. Will you cage me? Will you cage me? Due to the enormous amount of electricity running through her body, the black-haired girl literally began to cook from the inside out. He could feel his blood almost boiling, his organs burning, and his skin melting. All of this simply made the boy feel a twisted happiness as he watched a woman who betrayed him writhe like a worm on the floor. You're the pulse in my veins. Only a few seconds passed, which for the black-haired woman felt like hours, before her body couldn't take it anymore. The Kendo Himejima died, her body had been almost charred due to the boy's attacks. Issei's army had already disappeared at this point, every being, entity, and race had returned to their respective dimensions in less than a blink of an eye. You're the war one fight. 
The Say's smile was so big that his face was beginning to deform. Now all that remained was to eliminate one last prey. Using a magic circle he disappeared from the devastated underworld, but not before telling Trihixa and Cao Cao to return to the mansion. Can you change me? Can you change me? Bria's ran desperately through the streets of Kuo, she was close to being able to complete the spell, damn it, why did it have to be so damn complex? Of the monster you've turned me into. The Redeed's eyes widened in horror as she sensed a monstrous energy throughout the city. You didn't have to be a genius to figure out who he was. Of the monster you've turned me into. Issei had finally arrived at Kuo City. He had not appeared in front of Ria's, on the contrary, he was many blocks away from her. He could have appeared in front of her, but he wanted to savor this moment. Of the monster you've turned me into. Tears of fear and despair came out of the Grimmery's eyes without stopping, she could feel her heart beating a thousand times an hour. Of the monster you've turned me into. End of music. Issei walked slowly through the city, enjoying the complete silence. For anyone else, that desolate sight plus that deathly silence would have been terrifying, but not for him, for him it was completely calm and comforting. He could feel that his prey had stopped at a specific point, a dark smile appeared on his face as he recognized the place. Almost there, almost there, almost there, just a little more damn it. She said desperately laughing while she was putting the finishing touches on the parchment. For his part, Issei had reached some stairs, which were barely intact. A smile appeared on his lips at the thought that came to mind. The brown-haired boy began to walk down the stairs, obviously this wouldn't be impressive if it weren't for the fact that he was dancing. But every step he went down, a memory came to his mind. When he met Rias. When he was reincarnated as a demon. When he met Asia. When he faced Raynor. When he defeated Razor. When they faced Kakabiel. His battle against Vali. And along etc. But those memories no longer mattered, they had made their decision just like him, and he wasn't going to back down for absolutely anything. Just as his foot touched the last step. I did it Rhea shouted with all her might as her being overflowed with happiness. The scroll in her hands began to blossom in front of her as it emitted a faint golden glow. Finally with this spell everything will be back to how it was before. The redeed said while crying with happiness. But what kind of spell was this? Simple, it was a spell to travel through time. A few months ago, shortly after Issei conquered Venezuela, everyone was desperately looking for something that would help them stop him. They spent days searching for something that would at least seal or banish him, but their efforts had been useless. Until one day Michael arrived with good news. In the old archives of his father, that is, God, he had found a golden scroll, which contained a powerful spell inside, which would allow its user the ability to travel through time, however one could only travel to the past, not the future. The discovery of this spell sparked a small flame of hope in them. If they could use that spell, they could return to the past before all that disaster happened, they would avoid betraying Issei, and the factions would be saved. However, not everything was so easy. It turns out that in order to use that spell, a huge amount of magic was needed, and at that time, with their powers increasingly weaker, it would take them months to gather enough magic to be able to use it. But in the end it was all worth it. The scroll began to shine much more intensely, covering a large part of the city. Rias couldn't stop the tears of happiness from coming out of her eyes. Little by little everything around him began to break as if it were glass. The ground, the buildings, the trees, even the sky itself, everything was breaking into pieces, showing the cold emptiness of space. It works, it's working, it really works Rhea shouted euphorically. The spell was working, the journey had begun, the girl felt that all the sacrifices had not been in vain. I was about to get it. How oh, what's wrong? The redeed looked around in confusion, she was supposed to be in the past now, but she was still in that cold void of space. What's wrong? Did it not work? Did I need more magic? She was beginning to despair when she saw that the spell had stopped halfway through the journey. Suddenly she saw a bee flying past her. Only the bee was flying backwards. Here okay. Everything around him began to move in reverse, as if it were a video. The birds flew backwards. The bullets returned to the guns. And everything was rebuilt again. But what is this? Rias asked, more than terrified. But her fear only increased when she heard a dark voice behind her. The voice she knew perfectly. This is Requiem. The Gremory instantly turned around and what she saw left her in shock and more terrified than ever. What he saw could easily be defined by a single word. God. The say was floating in the air making a somewhat strange pose, but what terrified her was not that, what terrified her was the golden humanoid silhouette that posed next to her. Lucky I made it so she could see it. Issei thought maliciously. The redeed could feel that her sister had a simply enormous power. Without realizing it, everything around him returned to normal, as if the spell had never been activated. The boy descended to the ground still with the golden humanoid at his side. I must say Arias. 
his aide began to speak, upsetting the demon I was a little surprised that out of all the probable futures you decided to use that spell. I must admit that it was a good strategy, it could have worked with anyone, but unfortunately for you I'm not just anyone he finished his monologue with an innocent and at the same time macabre smile. At this point the redeed felt like she was about to have a panic attack. I in the end all of our efforts we were in vain. The girl's voice cracked as a lump formed in her throat. The brown-haired boy simply looked at her mockingly. Don't blame yourself Ria's after all they never had a chance. He replied, amused to see the redeed's mental state. D this can't be possible W what the hell are you? I asked, terrified and desperate. The say simply looked at her for a few seconds before answering. I am everything and at the same time I am nothing, I am the one who was at the beginning of all things, I am the one who is waiting at the end for the cosmic nothingness to swallow everything that exists, I am even the one who is looking back at those who are reading us through the screen. The say's smile became more and more macabre to the point that Ria's felt as if that smile was digging deep into her soul. By the way you didn't notice where we are, he said with a mocking smile. The girl reacted and looked around only for her eyes to widen in shock. He, that's right Rias, this is the place where I was killed by Rainer, the place where it all began, and where it all will end. But that last thing said, the redeed reacted and tried to escape. But it was too late. The say was already in front of her, as was the strange golden humanoid. He had his fist nailed into her chest, his arm passed through her from side to side, even the being had her heart in his hand, without hesitation he crushed said organ with a mere squeeze. The stand faded away, and Rias fell to the ground with a thud as a pool of blood formed beneath her. Your pain will never end Rias, because it never began, you deserve worse than death itself, you will never reach reality. He said with surprising calm as his eyes shone a deep crimson. He had done it, Issei had condemned Rias to an eternity of suffering. That day not only the entire supernatural world fell, but all other countries fell before him, Asia, Europe, the United States, Asenia, everything was dominated by a single man, no, not a man, by God, and his name is. Epilogue. The years had passed since Issei had completely taken over the entire planet Earth, he had murdered all the governments of the world, so that they would not get in the way of his plans, he had also gotten rid of all the nuclear weapons, since these only harm the planet, it is not as if he would need them, after all he was an omnipotent being. But he didn't stop with just his planet, he went even further, reaching the point where he conquered other planets, eventually conquering entire galaxies, until finally he took over the entire universe. He knew that beyond there was a multiverse with infinite worlds, but the rest of them were not his problem, his duty was to take care of his world, and with that in mind he made a decision. Using his power he created an enormous barrier, which literally covered his entire universe, but this barrier was not common, nothing, and no one could enter his universe, one would think that then it was like a prison, but nothing could be further from reality, it is true that no one could enter, but everyone could leave. If people didn't like their world, they were free to leave whenever they wanted, but once outside, they could never set foot in again. It's not like there are people who want to leave. The chestnut tree had created a tree utopia in his world, wars had ended forever, people no longer went hungry. Now the problems were nothing more than small disputes where a tooth or two were knocked out, but nothing more than that. Issei decided not to revive his parents, not because he couldn't, but because he knew that it was time for their souls to rest in peace on the other side. Besides, if he revived them sooner or later they would die due to old age, and if he made them immortal they would only suffer. He could also go visit them in the other world whenever he wanted, after all he is everywhere, on every planet, solar system, galaxy, mind, he is simply everywhere, for a reason he is omnipresent. Each one had moved on with his or her life. Ao Kao was now in a relationship with an extremely beautiful brunette woman. They were not married yet, but their relationship was going very well. Issei for his part was lying in the large bed of his luxurious room, which was decorated with green LED lights, had a high-tech gaming computer, a flat screen and many other things that there is no time to explain. The brunette had a relaxed expression on his face. Something to mention was that I was not alone. From under the sheets came a naked Trahiksa, who looked at the boy with an unholy smile. Good morning darling the purple-haired girl said with a flirtatious smile. Good morning, dear, the brown-haired boy greeted with a warm smile. September, both had deepened their relationship until they finally decided to take the next step and get married. Hey, I think we should get up, Issei commented calmly. And why is that? I want to stay like this a little longer, Trihiksa replied, snuggling into her husband's chest. Suddenly a huge explosion shook the entire place, however this did not alarm or scare either of them. That's why, the brown-haired boy answered calmly. The woman simply sighed as she stood up and began to get dressed alongside her husband. 
when they both finished getting dressed they went out to the patio of their house, which was a kind of mix between the Garden of Eden and the Elysian Fields, the mansion was even where the explosion came from, it should be noted that their house was a bucking mansion, bigger than the old Gremory mansion. They both walked calmly until they reached the source of the problem. A few meters in front of him was a grotesque or terrifying skeleton, some parts of it covered by pieces of skin, which seemed to be in a state of putrefaction, it had two yellow horns, which screamed backwards, its eyes were completely black with a bright green point as a pupil, its clothes were a combination of the clothes of a king and a sorcerer, its head was covered by a hood. And on top of the hood a metallic crown. The grotesque skeleton was in front of a small boy who appeared to be about 10 or 12 years old, who had blonde almost golden hair, and his eyes were a deep red color, like a pair of beautiful rubies. The boy was lying on the ground, staring in fear at the grotesque being in front of him. When both adults arrived in front of them, they looked at each other for a second with a bored face, only to then let out a sigh. Yami, stop bothering your brother right now, Trahiksa demanded with her arms crossed. The skeleton seemed to frown in annoyance, only for his body to be engulfed in a ghostly green fire. When the fire dissipated the skeleton had disappeared, and in its place there was a beautiful young woman, her skin was pale as snow, her eyes were a bright yellow giving her a terrifying touch, her hair was long and black, which reached a little below her waist, she had a pair of horns on her head, and a pair of black dragon wings coming out of her back. No, Okasama you are very boring, I was just playing, I wasn't even going to hurt him. The black-haired girl complained with a childish pout. The girl's name was Yami Haidu, the firstborn of Issei and Trahiksa. She was born with great skills in black magic and necromancy, having abilities such as manipulating the dead and changing into a spectral form. Despite this, his personality was above all mischievous, he liked to use his spectral form to scare others, especially his younger brother. Stop scaring me one Sama, you know he doesn't like it the little boy complained, recovering from his fear. The little boy's name was Gilgamesh Haidu, the boy despite his young age had developed a great control over reality, being a reality warping on a solar system scale. He was like any other boy his age, he was full of energy, he loved to play and spend time with his family, apart from having fun with his powers. Both he and his sister, despite their great powers, led normal lives, they lacked nothing, Issei was in charge of that. The chestnut couldn't be happier, he had a beautiful and loving wife, children whom he loved with all his heart, and a perfect world that he himself had created, now all he had left to do was live his eternal life next to his family. And so this story ends. The story of a being, a god who had achieved his goal, the lie is the greatest in all existence true peace. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.